Tune. So here we are at the Rhythm Ranch. I'm back in Toronto, playing with my friends. Came back here to work specifically with John Pickering and Michael Fonfair, and I'm uh, doing something different, something new for myself, new direction, the way I wanted to go, and uh, it's all exciting for me at the moment. It is a big change in direction. Uh, from the music that you were involved in in the past, thanks for walking through the shot. <laughs> you gotta love me. <laughs> That's why we came here, you see, that John's the guy we love. <laughs> back to rhythm. Here. So you're back in Toronto? Yep, back in Toronto, recording here at Rhythm Ranch. Back with my old friend Michael Fonfaro and John Pickering, who I wanted to get together with. Definitely understands my vision and my sound, going in a different direction. I'm really doing what I want to do, because now I'm older, I'm not really playing the game, you could say. It's more about you know, my relationship with my guitar and my journey to be where I am right now at this space of time. It took you a while to find a guitar, the right guitar. Yeah, I've gone through many, yeah, yeah. I think it's possible because Some of the sounds that really affected me when I was very young was the jazz guitar hollow body sound. And of course, as I got older, then, you know, the Hendrix and the Clapton and the whole guitar hero. So, solid body guitar, you know, fuzz tones and the whole thing, you know. But I, now I still find myself going back to that tone that, that seemed to inspire me as a boy, you know. You heard that tone for the first time when you were really young. And you pursued that tone because you heard something in it. Yeah. And you told me the story about the, uh, really your first jazz teacher. This was the guy you went for music lessons. Yeah, yeah Mike Rodden. That's the guy. Yeah. So what did you hear? What did he, what did he say? Well, he was more, I think he was fascinated that I was quite young to be interested in that music. So he played a lot of mind games on me and, uh, and really tried to show me a way that, uh, it's your journey, as long as you find it, and the the inspiration of, of freedom and opening up your ears. It, it would tease me, it would show me things, and then say, you know, well, now you know as much as me. What are you gonna do with it? Like, so, you, the, what kind of music? What was the music that your peers were listening to when you were getting into heavily into guitar? Your friends, they were listening to more music. rock and roll. I loved that too. You know, I mean, I was a big Elvis fan too when I was really little and all that stuff. So I loved all that too, but it was it when I heard those Jimmy Smith, Kenny Burrell stuff. It just something that seemed to really grab me. The sound of the the sound of that just grabbed me. So and, you could say more than BB yeah. King and stuff. Yeah. Although I loved all the singing sound of the blues, which I'm into. But it was something about West Montgomery and Kenny Burrell in that period. So I don't know. It just intrigued me as a you know quite young that sound for some reason. So is it a real for you when you sit down and you you're listening to the tunes that you're recording here? Uh, do you hear the departure in in the kind of music that you played? Let's say in the last ten years, it's it, it's gone yeah, to a different level. Yeah, and I feel it's more bees what I do at home, more than you know, you sort of do in the contemporary rock scene or something, right? So yeah, yeah, and I'm. Um, it's cleaner, it's not, you know, it's the sort of sounds that I really like instead of going for the contemporary sound that people want, you know. They expect to hear guitar with distortion, harmonic distortion, they expect to hear these things, which is fun. But to me, I uh, grew up in that period. It's, you know, it's redundant for me anyway. So this is more challenging and inspiring to just do it this way. We've had some pretty challenging players with you on the tracks. Uh, Terry Martell and Garth Vogan, uh, they play with you pretty regularly, so you guys are pretty much on the same page most of the time. Well, I've used Garth before. I did a record before I went to Vancouver. With Garth was on it with Paul DeLong. Garth is a fantastic musician, not just a fantastic bass player, but a fantastic musician. And I sort of met Terry when I came back here, and I love Terry because he's a real artsy interpreter of a of a song and makes it unfold so I wasn't worried about who I picked I was more worried about me 
Yeah, well, you're in the preliminary stages now, and uh, still in the planning stages and the arrangements. Uh, what's next? Uh, well, clean it up, get to our, where we want, and get it out there to the folks, really. And then move on with some new projects. I feel I'm really getting something out of me that it needs to get out of me to move on at the same time. It's like a new direction, there's more to come. So it's the, it's the first step for the road I want to go down, I guess. Well, everybody loves it here at the ranch, and I know your fans are going to love it too. So uh, there'll be more to come. Keep tuned. See you, Joe. Thank you very much.